Okay, so you were very ambitious on the second episode to jump in, especially with the scene, specifically the one I want to talk about is this scene uh, with Ellen on the phone, uh, basically getting broken up by Jeffrey. Um, and um, it's it's like a three-minute or more scene all in a single, in a one -er, and um, tons of marks that you hit. Was that, did were you nervous about being that ambitious on your second episode? Yeah, that, you know, it's so funny. I was just telling the Dolly Grip the other day about, they, they call it dance floor when they put down, you know, plywood and then like a, a nice sort of vinyl sheeting over it yeah. so that it can move the Dolly all around. And Polly and I went into the studio on the weekend and sort of, it was a page monologue. So we sort of figured out where she would be when, and I was trying to be the camera and we kind of tried to work it all out because on regular TV, there's no rehearsal, like in the theater, you know, you have four weeks or six weeks or whatever, but in the way TV shows work, you go in, the director will tell you where, the, how they want the blocking because in theater, you know, the actor can find it over sure, time, the rehearsal sure. process, but in TV, there's no, <laughs> there's hardly time to shoot the show, let alone find how, what your moves are going to be. So the director will say, because they've sort of pre-blocked how they want to shoot the scene, they'll tell the actors where to be and mm -hmm. where to go. And then we'll run it once or twice and they'll do it like for marks where you put tape on the floor where you have to walk to. Right. And then the, you'll go away and get hair and makeup. The stand-ins will come. They'll be there while they light it. So, you know, I knew that a whole page monologue, we weren't going to have in 10 minutes to figure this out. So mm -hmm. Polly and I went in on the weekend, spent like an afternoon trying to work it out. And I had thought, boy, wouldn't it be cool if we didn't have to cut the camera? Yeah. So we, we did it. And then on the day of shooting, I guess it must have been that Monday then, we, um, I mean, I'm not sure what day it was, but mm -hmm. we did rehearse off, you know, out of the set. I told the Dolly Grip, Polly and I showed them what we wanted, and he kept putting tape because he had to hit certain marks as of course. he the camera. And, and he was numbering them. And there were, tw I remember there were 21 camera positions Insane. in the sequence. Now, so the Dolly Grip wasn't there with you on the weekend. That was Not just... That, no. no, he was regular crew guy. Right. Thing, you know. So when you approach that, let's see, so you go into this rehearsal with Polly. You're on the actual set that's already been built? Yeah. Okay. Um, and, um, and do you already have those marks in your own script, or do you wait to do that no, with her? No, I, she and I, you know, like... Maybe you would turn your back here. Maybe you would turn here. Maybe at this point you'd get up. Or mm -hmm. she would say, I think I'd get up now. And I'd say, okay. So then the camera could get follow you a little closer. Mm -hmm. and maybe now you walk away. We'll pull back. You know, it was just trying to figure it out with her. So it was sort of like yeah. a condensed theater rehearsal process, just the two of us. Okay. <laughs> it's nice to be able to have that quiet time with the actor to do that without the pressure of the crew being there and all that. Yeah, that, like, never happened. Right. <laughs> you know, it happened once. I did an episode of Army Wives, and I actually, it was about seven years ago, I cast Gina Rodriguez, uh -huh. who's starring in Jane the Virgin now, yeah. in the part. And she had to play a, a Army wife who had gotten beaten up by her soldier husband and, you know, was coming mm -hmm. to terms with that, and should she report him or not. And there was a scene in there, a really brutal scene, where it was a big fight scene and she gets beat up. And that was one time where we went in with her and the actor playing her husband. And we also worked it out one afternoon. We were actually in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. We worked it out. Mm -hmm. so, because, it again, was a whole choreographed, you know, where he hits her and, you know, they're right. running after each other and she goes down. And, again, it would have it took more time to figure out than you have actually on the set. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you um, did she? Do you remember her having any particular concerns or anything about that that number? I mean, it was one page, but it went on for minutes. Do you remember there anything about that scene being tricky? I mean, there there was such an emotional as you had with all your scenes on Thirty Something, but there was such a journey. She gets sarcastic. She gets tearful. She gets um, uh, ironic. Um, she does a whole bunch of things in, you know, three minutes. Do you remember any particulars of that, of the challenges of that particular scene? You know, the, the, the writing, the writing on 30 something was pretty astonishing that way. But, um, Holly, she'd gone to Yale school of drama. She had a, 
a stellar Broadway and New York theater career mm -hmm. uh, before and after 30 something. She was a really known theater actress in, in the theater circle in New York. Right. And, um, you know, she's just got complete control of her instrument. I mean, she's just consummate. So it was, and you know, they knew that. So they wrote for her and mm -hmm. uh, they knew she was up for it. Her. Yeah. Um, does the actor write the blocking into their script? Like if there's, if there's that many, if there's that many marks, she goes over to the mirror, combs her hair, comes back down, sits down, turns her back to the camera, um, you know, uh, all these things. Do they write all? Wait, uh, I think as we did it, she probably wrote it down just so, because we were kind of locking it in. I, I'm sure she would have written it. I would have had to. Yeah. You know, we ran it also. So just like in a theater rehearsal, you know, you get, oh, wait, on this line, I get up and move over right. here. On this line, I go sit down. You know, it, it, it comes to you. Right. Now, b let's talk about business in the scene. Polly didn't do a lot of business in the scene. She brushed her hair at one point. She basically had the phone and the phone cord to play with. Um, how do you know when to use business and when not to? I mean, when is it too much? I don't know if it's ever too much. I think most of the time, you know... I think most of the time directors don't give you business and I think it's up to the actor to do it. Otherwise you're just always standing there just saying your lines. Yeah. yeah. And um, I know it's sort of like the job is to take life, real life and put it in front of an audience or put it in front of a camera. And so I'm always trying to come up with stuff to do. And, and even when I'm directing, I'm always trying to, give the actor something to do so that, and that actually helps movement or helps the camera or yeah. a few other camera angles because they're moving even in a kitchen, you know, instead of just standing there, they go to the counter or they go to the shelf, they get a glass, they go to the refrigerator, they take out a bottle of water, they go to the counter, they yeah. put water in the this, and they go back to the refrigerator. But the, you know, at least you're speaking and then you're moving and it's not just like you're standing there, Speaking. Right. What uh, Richard says, you were the best at it uh, when when the when the show began. Um, I, I'm assuming you had you had studied that before, but you seem to be a real natural when it comes to business. Um, talk to me as a director. Um, see, you don't see it as much on TV now. There's there's I don't know why people aren't thinking of it, but um, I wish directors would put things in people's hands. Let's talk about some of the quiet clever pieces of business you've given actors you know sound is always an issue but you can only fold clothes for so long in a in, in a in a show so what are some of the other quiet everyday pieces of business that you've thrown at actors well you know every day is like they're drinking a cup of coffee or right. a cup of tea or they're you know eating something although eating is always tricky for an actor because you don't want to have the food in your mouth when you talk right you know? but, move food uh, around you know, thirty something. We used to joke about, oh, it's another melon baller scene. That was, we're like, <laughs> that's we're quiet. Home, we're going to Hope and Michael's house to borrow some melon, a melon baller. Polly used to say that all the time. That used to crack me up. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, behavior. You know, around the house, I think it's it's hard. I remember once I came in with, um, I think, a jar of black nail polish, and the director looked at me and I said, oh, I thought I could just be sitting here putting on my nail. Polish. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Once I had a director say, okay, you're going to be making a salad in this scene. So here's the salad bowl and the lettuce is in the fridge and the dressing's over here. You know, he wanted me yeah. really busy. Yeah. Um, Why didn't you tell me you were going? Yeah, but you didn't go out there just to see Christy. I mean, you would have told me that, wouldn't you? You really went to see Audrey. She called and asked you to come? Who? Christy? Audrey? <sighs> What, she called and said she wanted to talk to you about getting back together? Oh. Oh, all right, she didn't say getting back together. She said, let's talk about the future. Well, what future did you think she wanted to talk about, Jeffrey? I think she wanted you to fly 3,000 miles to, to discuss the reunification of Germany? I am not being sarcastic. I'm being ironic. And? And what happened? No, I don't want to wait till you get back. I've been waiting a day and a half. If you've got something to tell me, Jeffrey, I, I, I really wish that you would just do it.
I'm still here, where else would I be? I can imagine. No, I mean it. Must have been a difficult decision for you. And that's kind of a consolation for me, knowing that it wasn't easy for you to lie to me and... No, 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 that's not my interpretation, that's the truth. You lied to me and you went off just because you thought there was a chance you and your first wife could just put everything back the way it was, just all neat and tidy and... Well, it's my language. If you don't like it, if it makes you uncomfortable, I said, if I make you uncomfortable, So basically, you're telling me that I should have known you were an unreliable son of a bitch and I was an idiot to get involved with you. Yes, I agree. It is healthy to admit when you make a mistake. Is that what you're reducing me to now, Jeffrey? A mistake? Well, the good news is your stuff is still in boxes, so you can come pick it up sometime when I'm at work. Very perceptive, Jeffrey, and I think the reason I sound hurt is because I am hurt. Jeffrey. Jeffrey, I gotta tell you something. I think I'm the one that's supposed to be crying. It's hard. Yes, tell me something that's easy.